hello it's so good to see you again I'm glad that we've been able to connect again today and I hope I can bring some more information that you can use in your life to support your health and support your well-being because it's all about the more we can support each other in that and the more we can move forward and and get healthy together the more of a community we're going to be able to produce from that I'm really excited to be part of that process so if you've got any comments during this session please write comment below and I'll address anything I can during the session put some love hearts some likes in, like likes there so that I can see that you're there that would be fabulous but what I wanted to speak about today or to give you um, some information about is stealth infections so what is a stealth infection so many people don't quite understand what a stealth infection is or how it can really impact on their life. So it's something that we'll find a lot more research going on in the future and we'll get a lot more information coming out about it. But stealth infections are the invaders. Let's think of them in that, that term. Stealth infections are the microbes um, that, can, that can invade our body. But the thing is they can stay in our body. So today I wanted to address that. So for those that don't know you, know me, I'm Teresa Todd. I'm a naturopath, biochemist, microbiologist, and author of The Energy Solution. And I love sharing this information with you. So with the stealth infections, what we're going to look at is whether how you can identify if that's what's triggering your ill health. Hi, Ariane, great to see you. And Shirley, so good to have you here. And is it contributing to your ill health? Have you got symptoms that no one's really been able to identify? I get a lot of clients that come in and go, I've had all the tests done, all the tests are clear, the doctor says there's nothing wrong, the blood test, there's nothing showing up, but I just don't feel right. And that's when we tend to have a look at, is there a stealth infection underpinning this? So let me go back to explain what a stealth infection is. It could be microbes, so it could be bacteria, it could be viruses, it could be other pathogens that are in your body that try to evade your immune system. So in our body, we've got the immune cells, and the immune cells are the white blood cells that are your army so let's talk in terms of army so we've got the army that look around and they they protect they protect us from the bacteria the viruses and other pathogenic organisms from invading our body and causing illness but occasionally some of these microbes are able to defy the immune system they're able to hide so what they can do is they can enter our cells and they can hide inside our cells and then the immune system the army sort of flies by, right by because they're not seeing, seeing that virus or that bacteria that's inside the cell. They think it's just the immune system just thinks it's part of us. So examples of these um, microbes is things like Epstein-Barr uh, virus. We've got the mycoplasma. We've got um, strep, uh, Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, the herpes viruses. So whether it's um, the cold sores that you get the recurrent infections with, whether it's the genital ones, then you've also got um, plantar warts, so the, the virus that causes the warts. All of these can be seen as being a stealth infection. But other things like Giardia and Helicobacter pylori, which are uh, infective agents that get into our digestive system and sometimes can be a little bit hard to eradicate. So it's these kinds of viruses, bacteria and microbes that are in our body that can be overwhelming the body and just, and I call it undermining the immune system. You think if your immune system goes, I know someone's there, I'm going to fight them, and it's constantly looking for those microbes, it eventually will get tired and run down. It'll get depleted in its resources. And that's when the virus can really come out of the cell, wherever it's hiding of the cells, those kinds of things, and cause symptoms again. And when it can cause symptoms, that get, can be anything from getting a cold sore outbreak. That could be something else like um, quite fatigued. So a couple of my clients tend to get very, very fatigued. They can't get out of bed. It's, it's that chronic fatigue kind of situation that goes on. And they find that they're bedridden or they can't get over. They've got viral-like symptoms, so fevers, aches and pains, those kinds of things. And they just can't get out of bed and can't get moving. And that's part of, that can be part of when the virus does come out and, and show itself with that. So symptoms that you can get. So when we've got these stealth infections, they can actually, we can get lots of generalized symptoms, symptoms that really don't mean much on their own. 
So it could be anything from just generalized fatigue, it could be um, brain fog, foggy memory, poor concentration, weight gain. You can also get um, muscle aches and pains, you can have trouble with your sleeping patterns. All of these can actually be symptoms that you've got a stealth infection going on. Hi Pete, great to see you, and Shelley, thank you for joining. So it can be that these symptoms, these I suppose nondescript or very generalized symptoms could be an indication that there's a stealth infection going on underneath. Now if the stealth infections are allowed to go on long enough in our body and go undetected and, and really nothing gets done about it and it depletes the immune system, that's when we can get conditions such as chronic fatigue. That's when we can get conditions such as autoimmune diseases. So a lot of the autoimmune diseases can be linked back to exposure to even Epstein-Barr virus. Um, you've got some of the, I've got a couple of clients, well one particular client that was exposed to a parasite over in Bali and that triggered her autoimmune condition because it just wasn't picked up properly. So it can actually trigger a lot of other symptoms, um, uh, sorry, a lot of other conditions and, and that can be down the track. Even fibromyalgia can be, can be attributed to a, a stealth infection. So if you're suffering from any, any of the autoimmune diseases, um, fibromyalgia, even that have the chronic fatigue, then look into, have you been exposed to some viruses like Rostra fever, Epstein-Barr, glandular fever, um, even mycoplasma, there's no real test for mycoplasma, but mycoplasma has been is seen to be, um, it, well, it's, it's underlying a lot of conditions and there's a lot of research coming out of America about that particularly with the Gulf War syndrome and, and those kinds of things that they're saying could have been a micro, mycoplasma underlying some of that. So what can you do? So if you've got these symptoms and they're, they're there and they're just perver they're there all the time and, and there's not, not, much, or not much results that you're getting, have a look into the stealth infections. So one of my clients, he gets sick every six months. And when he gets sick, he goes down, he can't get out of bed for six weeks every six months. And that actually stops him being able to work. And when we looked into the history, he had an exposure of Epstein-Barr many years before. But what would happen is about every six months, he would become run down and that virus was able to rear its head, let's say in those terms, rear its head up again so that it could um, overwhelm the system. And then that would cause his fatigue that was so bad that he couldn't get out of bed. So even looking at symptoms where there's a recurrency of, of illness, I had a, had a client yesterday who would had a viral infection, took several weeks to get over, had a big work, had a lot of things to do with work, so couldn't take time off to recover. And now every two months, he goes down sick. It takes him almost, almost two months to get over it. He get, just finds that he's getting right again, and then he comes back down and gets all of these nondescript symptoms like the fatigue, the itchy skin, he has food in, food sensitivity, the foggy thought. He, he just finds his concentration isn't as good as it should be. And in his line of work, he really needs to be switched on so that he doesn't make any mistakes and kill himself or someone else. So that's really important that he's able to think in, in the situation that he's in. And so when we're looking at it, he has been exposed to, again, Epstein-Barr. Epstein-Barr virus was... Um, showing up in the history that he'd been exposed to it. And, and that was the, the virus that was just overwhelming the immune system. Hi, Cherie. So good to see you, darling. Hi, Melanie. <laughs> Hi, gorgeous. <laughs> um, so what can you do? Firstly, get tests done. Look, find a, a practitioner that will work with you and, and do viral screenings. So check for all the viruses. Look for someone that can also test your immune system. So looking at the white blood cell count, but even more beyond that, sometimes we get clients that go and get white blood cell counts done and their white blood cell counts are fine. But when we look at it under the microscope, the white blood cells are not effective. They're not, they're not mobile, they're not viable. So they're not able to move around to, to look for viruses and bacteria. So it's about making sure that your immune system is not only there in the numbers that it's needed, but that it's viable. And so it is about having being out, having someone that can have a look down the microscope and really just have a look. Are they moving? Are they mobile? Or are they sort of snoozing on the job, as I call it? So just think of if the army was out at war somewhere else and they 
were in you know active war zone and then suddenly they all fell asleep they wouldn't be very effective and that can be the same with your white blood cells the numbers could be there but they could be asleep if we put it in those terms so getting getting white blood cell counts but really having a look at the viability of the white blood cells um, inflammatory markers so ESR particularly the CRP which can actually give you an inflammatory marker that's going on you can also get other tests done some of them have to be sent overseas where you can look for the ba bacteria such as Borrelia that um, can, can be linked to Lyme-like illness. And so what we need to look at is, is, is there those kinds of bacteria there? And we need to look at the big picture that's happening. So find someone that can help you pinpoint down what's going on. Have a look at um, tests for Helicobacter pylori. It's a breath test. Have a look at a stool test to see if there's any parasites or any bugs in, I'm going to call them bugs, um, parasites in the system that really shouldn't be there. So getting all of those tests done to give you the most amount of information that you can get. Hi Julie, thank you for jumping on board here. Those tests will actually help you to identify what's going on. Once you've had a look and identified it, then moving forward and actually supporting the immune system is important. Now, what we found is a lot of people, particularly there's a study that came out of America again, that 95, they're, they're estimating that 95% of people in America have, have been exposed to Epstein-Barr virus. That's a very high percentage. Not everyone shows symptoms of it, but even having a loved one or a family member have Epstein-Barr or some of these viruses means that you would have been exposed to it at some stage, but that it hasn't. And so you could be what they call a carrier, but it hasn't elicited symptoms in you but if given the right conditions, it could, it could come on out. So that if you have symptoms of, you have never had the Epstein-Barr. So I've got a lot of people that have said, nope, I've never been sick. I've never had ross fever. A lot of people get it around grade 12 when there's a lot of stress, um, that high intensity workload. A lot of kids tend to get sick in grade 12 and they think, oh, it's just a flu. But it, when we do the testing, it's the ross, it could be the ross fever. And so we need to have a look at what's going on in the whole picture. So, and, and then their family members have probably been exposed to that at that time. So it's good if someone, if a few of the family members, I had one family that 11 of the family, 11 of the 15 family members t were positive to this one particular um, infective agent. And so, and not, but not all of the family members ex ex um, gave out all the symptoms, but the family members had been exposed to that. And that's fine. It's just as long as you do the next, the next few steps of keeping your immune system strong, giving it the support it needs. So the vitamin D, the vitamin C, vitamin A, zinc, they're all very important to help the immune system stay strong. So making sure that you've got all those key nutrients that the immune cells need to keep active and keep mobile. And then also making sure that your diet is rich in the unprocessed foods the foods that are not high in sugars, not high in the refinement, and looking at um, lots of plant-based nutrients so that you get all those nutrients that are gonna support the immune system. Remembering that 80% of our immune system comes from the bacteria load in our digestive system, so the bugs in our, in our gut. They're the ones that help our immune system. So the more you feed those good guys with that plant-based nutrition, the more they're gonna help support your immune system. So keep your diet based on plant-based foods, lots of variety, lots of color, and keep it very unrefined. And that way you'll be supporting the bacteria in your digestive system that you need for your own, for your own health. Also, what I get my clients to do is get sufficient rest. Make sure they're resting and, and when they're tired to rest and not push themselves through, through, the, through the tiredness that they're going on, they're going through because you want to be able to rest and you want to be able to allow the body to recuperate. When you're resting and you've got that adequate sleep and that you take the time out for yourself, your body gets to harness its resources so that it can fight these infections, fight these invaders. So it's very important to get that sufficient rest and not keep pushing yourself through, thinking it's okay, I'll get through it, I'll get through it, when in fact you're actually doing a little bit more harm to the body by doing that. And then what I do is I use, um, a lot of herbs to help the immune system as well and particularly some of the herbs that I'm using have got um, been shown to have antiviral actions or antibacterial actions and they can also help support those immune cells 
So we want to clear down the load of whatever the infective agent is. So looking to, looking to someone that can help you select the right herbs for the particular virus, bacteria, parasite that you've got will actually help to kill off the load and reduce down that load for you so that your body can start the healing process. So for instance, some of the herbs that I may use in formulations might be something like reishi or Japanese knotweed. Um, I also use astragalus, we've got asatus, lamatium. There's so many amazing herbs that can really help with the, load, with the microbial load and support your immune system in doing its job. So looking for some help from herbs is actually going to help you move towards health and recover from the symptoms that you've got going on at the moment. So I hope I've been able to give you some information and to give you a bit of a, an insight so that you're not feeling so alone with those symptoms that you just can't seem to find a way out of that you because some of the people some of the symptoms that are like the generalized fatigue the muscle aches the brain fog people are living with day in day out for year, for months years however long they've had it and it can be quite um, debilitating it can affect the quality of life and so what I hope that I've been able to help you with if you're suffering from these symptoms is to give you a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel, a way to keep going and a way to move towards that light so that you can come out the other side and, and strengthen your body and move, move towards a better future. So I look forward to seeing you again next time. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. It's been a great week for me. I've had a lot of fun. I've been presenting um, to business people about their health and how important their health is to, to further their business and help their business. And that was so much fun. I really enjoyed that. And I've loved spending time with you today and educating you and giving you an, an idea of where to go and where that path is, where the light is at the end of the path so that you can move towards your health. Have a fabulous weekend and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.